Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another review and today I'm taking a look at the high grade after colony Gundam Asclepius. Once again, this is a premium Bandai only release, so this would not have been possible without those absolutely fantastic people over at Baiyi. So if you do want one of your own, I'll throw a link down there in the description. Now this isn't my first time taking a look at one of these kits, and just in case you don't know what one of these kits means, this is a Gundam from Gundam Wing. Not the Gundam Wing that most people would be accustomed to, which is the anime that is a quarter of a century old right now, believe it or not. This is from the manga spin-off, G-Unit. Now I've never actually read G-Unit, but I've played the hell out of Gundam G-Generation Crossrays, is that what it's called? I can't remember off the top of my head, but I absolutely adored playing the G-Unit arc in that game. And this right here was one of my favorite suits. So I took a look at some of these already. That is the high-grade, funnily named uh, Gundam Geminas, the Geminas 2, as well as the expansion parts for Geminas 1, and the absolutely over-the-top rails. So if you want to check out any of those reviews, you can. But for now, let's just get right on into this. So first off, when it comes to the build of the high-grade Gundam Ascli... Ooh, that name. Asclepius right here. Well, for the most part, this is heavily based on the Gundam Geminis. That's because in the actual lore, in the actual manga, the Geminis Unit 2 is actually converted into this right here. So this is an upgraded version of the Geminis Unit 2. So in proper, based on a mobile suit kind of way, that does mean we have a whole bunch of parts of the Geminis in here, as well as a bunch of upgrade parts. The biggest difference, of course, is the color. This is mainly in white and gray with all of the new armor that kind of converts it into an almost zagok looking mobile suit is in purple. This so far is my favorite of the bunch and the build is just as fun as the other kits. This is completely built from the ground up for P-Bandai, which means this feels like absolutely nothing else. While building it, I did do a little bit of panel lining. I used some of the included stickers. There are quite a few. I used a couple of decals as well. And I did get rid of the safety knobs off the V-Fin and what you end up in the end is one hell of a Gundam and let's talk about the aesthetics. So now jumping right on into the aesthetics with the full 360 degree spin and the first thing I'm going to mention is this can be a little bit confusing to look at straight away to break down with all the armor attached. So before I actually do that let's talk about it with the armor off. With all of that purple armor off you can see that this is very obviously a variant of the Geminis, and one kick-ass variant as well. I will mention that there is a whole bunch of leftover Geminis stuff on the runner, but the only thing from what I can see in here that you can actually build is a full Geminis head, which is a cool little extra. This thing is absolutely covered in surface detail, that's why I did want to panel line it. I panel lined it with the extra thin type panel liners, and this is so much detail that I actually think the black that I used went a little bit on the overkill side. I actually wish I used a grey instead, because this just is panel line to hell and back right now. Either way though, this kind of looks almost more like an astray than an actual Gundam Wing suit, and I think that's pretty cool. It is like the cross between an astray and a Gundam Wing suit. Zooming in on the head, and this is a brand new mold for this kit, and it's got a big old crazy mohawk, a very astray looking V-fin right in front of that, and the color scheme on here is quite cool, especially because the eyes here are red, which is quite unusual when it comes to a Gundam. This, in general, is quite unusual for a Gundam, so if you're actually looking to grab yourself one of these P-Bandai G-Unit kits, I would actually recommend this one the most out of them all so far, because it is a Gundam with a very, very unique look. And it transforms into something that looks like a Zagok. I'll throw something in right now so you can actually see what that looks like, but I will do that transformation a little bit later on. When it comes to the stickers in here, there are quite a few color correcting stickers which I did not use. Most of these are just gray for on the vents, so I think you could actually get away with just panel lining those and you'll get all the detail you need. But if you do want to paint it, you will need some gray paint. We do have some decals in here. These are just simple sticker style decals, but it is quite cool to actually see some decals in a high grade kit. But the borders on these are quite apparent as they usually are when it comes to stickers, especially on the purple parts. But on the whole, not so bad and it looks pretty cool. So now jumping into a bit of comparison and there it is side by side with the Geminis Unit 1 and there it is side by side with the Geminis Unit 2. Once again, as usual, there are reviews of both of these on the channel if you do want to check them out. When it comes to its size beside a regular size Gundam, there it is beside the entry grade Oryx MTA2 as well as the high grade Oryx MTA2 Beyond Global. So as you can see, it's normal height, but it is quite a 
skinny or slender mobile suit. As for a comparison to a normal Gundam Wing mobile suit, there it is side by side with the high grade Wing Zero. And as for a random high grade, completely random, there it is beside the build Burning Gundam. And as for a size comparison with some absolutely random off the shelf high grades, there it is side by side with the high grade Gundam Hajiro Boshi. And there it is side by side with the tiny little core Gundam. So now jumping into the accessories and here's the high grade Gundam Aesculapius with absolutely everything that it comes with. Now we've seen pretty much everything that is in this lineup before with the Geminis except for the two new beam rifles so let's rock on through this pretty quickly. So now taking a look at the accessories that came with previously released kits, this is the Accelerate Rifle that would have came with the, well, both versions of the Geminis so far. This is very nicely designed, it is made out of multiple parts and we do have a little bit of colour separation in that light grey segment on the side. So when it comes to the hands we've included in here, we've got the standard sort of high grade holding hands which are these right here which have been attached the whole time so far and we do have a couple of options too, so popping that off, it's a ball joint attachment. And popping on the alternate right hand, which is this one right here, another holding hand with a trigger finger. Jumping over to its left arm, we can pop that off, that was a holding hand. And the alternate left hand we have is this one right here, which is a widespread dynamic fixed pose hand. Attaching the accelerate rifle is really simple, it just pops on in, slides on in, simple as. And there's a quick example of what it looks like holding onto it. It's simple, effective, and it looks extremely, extremely nice. So next up in here we've got a pair of beam sabers and just like this kit has an unusual colour for the eyes which are red, I don't think I've ever seen an orange beam saber ever and this is, well it's blowing my mind, it looks so good. Attaching these into the hands is quite simple, they just slot in like beam sabers usually do and these things really catch the light, especially blue light. So if I grab this from back here and bring it up you can see these things start to glow. Let's pop off a light and see if we can get them glowing up really nice. Look at that. That is so, so cool. The way kind of light pipes or whatever and almost looks like they're a little bit hotter towards the tip is blowing my mind. These rock. These kick ass. I've seen some cool green ones before, but never these ridiculous orange. If there's other kits out there with orange beam sabers like this, let me know. I need to know. So when these are not in use, you just remove them in the usual way, which is pop off the handle, just like so. And the handle segment just slots in under the shoulder binder armor, just like this. So the last weapons that we have in here is exclusive to this kit so far, and that is this pair of beam rifles. And what it says in the instructions is, these are additional armaments equipped as sub-weapons. Their output and range is inferior to that of the Accelerate rifle, but they can be equipped without interfering with the transformation mechanism. The handles on these do have a bit of a lip on the bottom so it means you can't just slot them into the hands. So in order to equip them you do have to pop the grey back off the hands, slot them in just like so and then pop the grey back back on sandwich style. When these are not in use they can be stored round back in a pretty cool kind of way. We've got this little bit of a hanging rack coming down from the back of the purple armour and you just slot them on just like so. They attach on simply, they attach on securely and it looks like part of the armour which is pretty cool. The last thing we have in here, and we saw this with the other Geminis kits, and that is this little bit here. This is a base adapter, which is quite an unusual thing to see with a high grade kit. It attaches on pretty securely and just adds a standard 3mm hole for attaching this onto any kind of action base, like this one right here. Just slots on, like so, and it is good and secure. That is not going anywhere. So at this point right here is usually where I would do the articulation, but I am actually going to skip on the actual articulation of the mobile suit first. So if you do want to see absolutely everything that this particular suit can do when it's in its mobile suit form, as what we would have seen with the Geminis, so you can check out that review. What I'm going to focus on today is that transformation to assault mode. Or as it's called right here in the manual, close combat mode. Let's give it a go. So the first step right here is you open out the shoulder binders, you have to take out the beam saber for one reason or another. Then you need to rotate the vernier in here 90 degrees then push it in. Now I had mine pushed in already for the entire review. So when it's in the normal robot mode or high mobility mode, this is actually meant to be sticking out a little bit further. So next up you disconnect the shoulder and extend it out on a little wire mechanism that kind of reminds me a little bit of Shenlong, which is pretty cool. 
You then rearrange the shoulder binder a little bit by pulling out and flipping it back. Then you bring the whole thing down over the arm and close it up. There doesn't seem to be any kind of clipping mechanism here, which kind of shocks me a bit. It's just kind of hovering over the arms a little bit loosely. So next up, moving down to the leg and you pull off this side segment here. When that's off, it unlocks a mechanism which allows you to drop a little cuff segment down further, covering up the foot. Then you grab the part you took off. You need to move this ball joint up one hole and then you flip the entire thing around like it flipped from the back or around to the front over the knees like you're seeing right now. Finally then you have to whip the whole head off so this is the only thing that kind of makes this a little bit of a parts formation because you removed one part. Flip it around back then you bring up these segments which become the new shoulder armors and then the whole segment then just comes up and over like a kind of armored hood or cowl covering the entire chest, shoulders and head. Flip down this little section at the back with the two beam rifles on it and then you pull down the front little segment to reveal that mono eye. So this right here is what we get in the end. I guess this is G unit's answer to the Zigok and it's got those big old claws. The only thing I will mention about this is these claws are still just kind of attached by the wires up here. They're kind of just rattling around the hands, which is a bit of an advantage and not an advantage at the same time. It means you can actually get your poses in without the arms kind of stopping the big new claws from actually moving. So it does work, but it does feel a little bit funny and kind of wiggly in the hand, but I think it works quite well. It's mainly the wires up here that's actually making sure that the arms stay in position and they do work quite well. Just let's see about the articulation here. I will mention the articulation on this kit anyway is quite limited, especially annoyingly up here at the hip. It tends to catch quite a bit. And there is an element of flimsiness to these G unit suits, but in the end, this does work quite well. And it is ridiculously beautiful. That is quite cool. Honestly, I love it. So anyway, that right there is it for the review, and when it came to the standard version of the Gundam Geminis, I gave it Silver Tier. What I said about it is, is it's a kit that looks absolutely phenomenal, but the actual engineering to the build and the joints and the articulation on it just wasn't up to scratch for the year it came out, which was 2020. Now, this kit at its core, the Geminis that is inside of it, would be exactly the same, but what Bandai has done here by adding on a whole bunch of new parts that look great, the colors are phenomenal, and just the way everything gels together, I feel it is so much more of a better kit than the standard Geminis that I'm gonna go ahead and give this one gold. So just going through everything really quickly, when it comes to the aesthetics, this is absolutely gorgeous. The colors are so unique, and it looks so good. There's so much extra detail in there, you need to panel line that up to get that poppin', but yeah, it's beautiful. When it comes to the accessories in here, you get everything that you could ever need. The beam sabers glow under black light in such a phenomenal kind of way, I've never seen that color before. And the extra stuff we get in here is nice, especially if you consider the transformation as part of the, uh, well, it's not really an accessory, is it? But it leads right on into the articulation. The core unit itself is okay. It basically does standing poses and not too much at the knees or the elbows. But the fact that you got the whole transforming gimmick in here that works quite well, that really gives it that extra edge. So yeah, when it does come down to it, this is a pretty cool looking kit. It feels quite good. And overall, I have to say I totally recommend it, especially if you're a fan of unique mobile suits or a Gundam Wing G unit. Anyway, as always, thank you so, so much for watching. Make sure to come back for more Gunpla reviews, and I'll see you next time. As always, this video and none of these videos would be possible without each and every one of you watching these videos, including those of you who are supporting me on the channel memberships and over on Patreon, including Van Fon, Orgy59061, Lawrence Seahack, Kill Me Inc., Joseph Kukluk, Joe, Gunpla UK Limited, Global Frequency Studios, Forsetti, Caleb Engelhart, and Craig Jerry. Man, I almost forgot to answer one of the most important questions of all, and that is, do the claws move? So this is the movement of the certain bits right here, and this bit kind of just moves with the kind of movement of that segment. So you can't get a fully closed and a fully open claw out of this. There's also some little guns in there.